start. <laughs> okay. So, John, you are on stage. Okay. I've been there before. <laughs> um, so I've uh, got a whole bunch of things to tell you. So I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to be talking a lot for the first part of this, but then I promise I will stop talking and you will hear some music. Um, and, and I have prepared these things and they won't at all sound like I'm reading from a script. <laughs> Why would they? Um, so when Mamie contacted me about being a part of this series, I felt a little self-conscious because I'm not really anybody in show business. My resume does not include the names of many familiar people or shows. Uh, I work in the trenches, in rehearsal studios and classrooms, the 90% of showbiz iceberg that's below the waterline. And occasionally I do show my face in public. So I thought about what I would have to offer to this program, and I decided to talk about what I do the best and know the best, which is how to be an accompanist for singers, how to be faithful to the music while also ripping it into unrecognizable bits and putting it back together. Uh, I was born and raised in what used to be called Green Acres, started taking piano lessons at six, the usual stuff, big jump. Beginning of 10th grade, I asked my piano teacher if we could work on harmony and pop music instead of classical repertoire. And so we had a year of me learning about chord symbols and voice leading and harmonic progressions. And that's when I started writing music. Uh, after South, uh, I went to Vassar, where the music department, shall we say, was very traditional. Uh, but I spent a couple of summers studying with a jazz pianist in New York and at the Eastman School of Music learning improvisation and arranging. After Vassar, I started playing in wedding and bar mitzvah bands, a job I had unwittingly prepared for my entire life because the soundtrack in our house growing up was Broadway and movie music and big bands and the Great American Songbook. And there was a little hole of, you know, rock and disco tunes, but that, that got filled in. Uh, until 1980, when I started to transition out of weddings and bar mitzvahs, First, I got hired to play second keyboard for a two-month concert tour by the singer Jane Oliver. And then I remember telling my mother about this, and she said, John, you sound very excited about this, and I'd like to be excited too. Who is Jane Oliver? Like I said, my resume doesn't have a lot of familiar people or names. It was a fair question, and... The tour went up out its business, and uh, then a couple of months later, I spent the summer working for the public theater on an Elizabeth Suedos project. And so I began to see the world outside of catering halls. Oh, and all right. So if I gave you Jane Oliver and Liz Suedos, I have two other names I can drop. Um, I played auditions for a Julie Taymor musical. There were no spiders. There were no lions. This was called The Green Bird. And I also, for a while, played auditions and rehearsals for the Ringling Brothers. You may have heard of them. They used to have a circus. Um, now, I'll tell you, playing rehearsals for a circus is very much like playing rehearsals for any musical theater piece, except there are camels. <laughs> and, and if you have a cat allergy, just in case you ever need to know this, lion dander, no such thing. Tiger dander will kill you. So be warned. Uh, another skip to now. After 42 years of classes, rehearsals, auditions, coaching one-on-one -on -one and playing for shows, we're here. So uh, apparently the library thinks I'm an artist. So my art is playing piano for singers, the thing I like to do best, and to help them tell a story. Now, choices have to be made about staying true to the original style and spirit of the music, not letting it get stuck. I'd say I'm a rule breaker, but there's no rule book for this stuff. So this is really just about my approach. Lots of my colleagues think very differently, and I'm the one with the bread and butter job, so they may be right. But I'm painting with an admittedly broad brush here. There's two types of singers. There's acting singers and singing singers. Acting singers are storytellers. 
Now, this is not a requirement by any means for success. There are a lot of people who are singing singers, Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan, Mel Torme, Tony Bennett, several thousand others. But there is a Cole Porter song about a cynical prostitute walking the streets. And if you ever hear anybody say, hey, let's do love for sale, but let's do it as a jazzy uptune. That person is not an acting singer. Now, some singers come up through conservatories or musical theater programs. Academic training often creates the mindset that there's a right and a wrong way to do things. And what's on the page is right. Well, if you stick to exactly what's printed on the page, then you might be singing something like, he may not be the man some girls think of as handsome. What's a mansome? Or the more I read the papers, the less I comprehend the world and all its capers and how it all will end. Instead of what you would do if you're saying it, which would be the more I read the papers, the less I comprehend the world and all its capers and how it all will end. Now, I don't mean to pick on Ira Gershwin in particular. He didn't really want you to say the lines that way. He, he wanted you to interpret them. So I need to talk about sheet music for just a second. Back when you were growing up in the 1890s, best-selling songs were best-selling because of sheet music. You heard the songs because your sister, who had taken piano lessons, played the music in the parlor. By the way, you had a parlor. Now, the printed piano part wasn't especially musical or inventive. It's functional. It's designed to be played by someone with basic to intermediate skills, most likely was created by somebody in the publishing company rather than by the composers. Now, this is less true in the last 50 years, but songwriters used to be rigorous about structure. They didn't try to force phrasing or inflection into the melody line. Also, they often didn't write rests on the page. So it might look, if you look at a piece of music, that you had to sing the entire song on one breath. This is not true. The implicit understanding is that it's the singer's job to figure out the phrasing and the breathing. And what we call the ink is a guide. It's not a requirement. So you should think of music, sheet music, like a recipe. Sheet music is to music like a recipe is to food. It's instructions. And you can follow the recipe exactly, and it will come out. But a more experienced cook will personalize it. And for our purposes, there are two cooks. There's me and the singer. So another broad brush. There are two circumstances when I'm playing for someone. Either we have a chance to rehearse ahead of time, or the singer just hands me the music, tells me quickly what's going on, and we do it. In that case, I will play conservatively, but mostly, besides the playing, I'm listening. I'm listening to the singer, because there will always be surprises. They might accidentally hold a note longer, skip an entire page. There have been times when I've turned the page in the music, and there's a page missing. That's always fun. But anyway, I'm evaluating the piano part on the fly because it may or may not suit the singer and the song. The printed accompaniment has a character of its own, and that's just a starting point. Given the opportunity, we can travel very far. Now, I play classes each week for two theater directors. Their names are Miriam Fond and Richard Spellico. They both treat the original song as step one. And happily, I've been doing similar deconstruction for a long time. And so, hey, guess what? We're at the end. So now you get to hear some music. Um, one thing I'd like to do as I share my screen so you can actually hear this stuff. And oh, no, I have to hit more buttons. Hang on. OK. Um, just to give you an example, songs have flexibility. So you may know the song, It Might As Well Be Spring. This is just the first two measures of It Might As Well Be Spring, but here are several possibilities for how you might present it.
So there we go. Um, now, some singers want to take a song and take it very much away from the way that most people are used to singing it and hearing it. Uh, there is, actually, I should have kept my screensaver on. I was going to share it on. Hang on. Let's go back. Now, this is, where are you? Where'd you go? Ah, there you are. Um, this is the beginning of a Taylor Swift song. I promise I won't make you hear the whole thing. I, but I want you to listen to is just basically how it's presented and what kind of energy it has. It's what you wanted again You know it's all the same Another time and place Repeating history And you're getting sick of it Okay, Doc. Don't need any more of that. So that song was presented to me when I was about to uh, be working on a concert that it's called Songs of Hope and it's an annual event and some people will sing things and they'll just call me and say, I've got this chart and we'll go over it and we're going to do it and that's fine. But then some people will say, hey, I've got this song and I'd like to sing it at the concert and we need to work on it because I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with it. So uh, you're looking at a young woman named uh, Megan Cerna and uh, Megan said, I want to do this Taylor Swift song. And I said, well, I actually never heard any Taylor Swift song, so this will be a first for me. And so she showed up and we uh, started looking at the music. She said, do you want to hear the original? I said, no, not yet. And so I just started reading the lyric. And I said, OK, so let's talk about what she's saying here and what you want to say with it. And I said, what if we try this? And trying this is what turned into this performance. So with, with the original in your ear, this is what we did to it. This song is for my biggest change this year, um, the passing of my voice teacher. So thank you, David. <laughs> The final blow hits you Somebody else gets what you wanted again And you know it's all the same Another time and place Repeating history and you're getting sick of it But I believe in whatever you do And I'll do anything to see
So the idea being that we're taking the song in its original form, but instead of letting the energy of the accompaniment guide us, we're letting the words guide us. And that is the, the acting singer story. Um, so the reason I've got Saturday Night up here, this is a show by Stephen Sondheim. And I just need you to hear the very beginning of this track. Oops. <laughs> Once I hated this city. Now it can't get me down. Slushy, humid, and gritty. What a pretty town. What thought I could be duller? More depressing, less gay. Now my favorite color is gray. A wall of rain as it turns to sleet. The lack of sun on a one-way street. I love the grime all the time. And what more do I need? My window pane has a lovely view. An inch of sky and a fly or two. Why I can't see half a tree. And what more do I need? Okay, so that's the original form. Uh, I worked on this with this fellow over here on the right, Aaron Morishita. This is part of an album that we did together over a period of time. And um, the first thing in, in the recording of Aaron's version is um, just something silly that came up one day in rehearsal. Uh, I started playing the introduction to a different Stephen Sondheim song, and it sort of worked. And then as this arrangement developed, it started with just the two of us, and then we added a bass and a drum, and then we wound up adding uh, a whole bunch more people, and it came out like this. Once I hated this city, now it can't get me down. Slushy, humid, and gritty. What a pretty town. What thought I could be duller, more depressing, less gay. Now my favorite color is gray. A wall of rain as it turns to sleet. A lack of sun on a one-way street. I love the grime all the time. And what more do I need? My window pane has a lovely view, an inch of sky and a fly or two. Why, I can see half a tree. And what more do I need? The dust is thick and it's galling. It simply can't be excused. In winter, even the falling snow looks you. My window pane may not give much light, but I see you, so the view is bright. If I can love you, I'll pay the dirt no heed. With your love, what more do I need? Someone's shouting for quiet. Someone's starting a brawl. Down the block, there's a riot. And I'll buy it all. Be close and be still Hear the lovely pneumatic drill A subway train thunders through the Bronx A taxi horn on the corner haunts But I adore every roar And what more do I need? I hear a crane making sweet repairs A two-ton child running wild upstairs Steam pops bang, sirens clang And what more do I need? The neighbors yell in the summer, the landlord yells in the fall. So loud, I can't hear the plumber pound the wall. An aeroplane rolls across the bay, but I can hear you as clear as day. You said you love me above the sound and speed with your love. What more do I?
Okay. Well, to my ear, Aaron sounds a whole lot happier saying that than those other two people did. Um, so now uh, I, I sort of have to apologize for what's about to happen. Um, there's a, a song from the show Nine called Unusual Way. And the original uh, accompaniment is a very restrictive bump a dump 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 well most of the show is actually accompanied by that same thing um and there was a time i was living in los angeles thinking about moving to the west coast and i was sitting around one afternoon and i got it into my ear to think about the song unusual way and think there must be something else that we can do with this so instead of bum bum dum bum dum bum dum bum, let's just do bum bum. Let's just do something slower and easier, and maybe not as it's it's a very uh, tonic song, but it doesn't need to be. So the harmony sort of goes crazy and goes everywhere, and uh, so now the now's the bad news. You're going to have to listen to me singing it because we don't have a recording. <laughs> This, this was another song that Aaron sang in one of his shows, but we don't have that recording. So uh, with, with my great apologies for your having to listen to me sing, here we go. In a very unusual way, one time I needed you. In a very unusual way, you were my friend. Maybe it lasted a day. An hour, but somehow it will never end. In a very unusual way, I think I'm in love with you. In a very unusual way, I want to cry. Something inside me goes weak. Something inside me surrenders. You're the reason why, you're the reason why, you don't know what you do to me, you don't have a clue, you can't tell what it's like to be me looking at you, it scares me so that I can hardly speak, in a very unusual way. So many thanks to my friend Boots Mallison, who played bass on that. Um, we recorded it a few days ago, actually, and, and that's where we are. Um, now, uh, getting back to Aaron, who's a, so much a better singer than I am, uh, the Don McLean song, Vincent, was something that he had wanted to work on for a really long time. And we both knew the original recording. And again, he wanted it to be more contemplative. And so we went in that direction and slowed it down. And again, made it a little more, oh, what's a good word? Ethereal, is that a good word? It's a great word. I don't know if it's the right word. Um, so here is Aaron Morishita one more time singing Vincent. Starry, starry. 
Okay, who needs an uptune? <laughs> I do. There we go. Um, this is uh, Anita Michael you're about to hear from. Uh, this is a show that she did last year that we started to do 
and was originally scheduled for three weeks after lockdown started. So we had lots of extra time to rehearse. <laughs> um, so we finally did get around to doing the show last year. And um, this is a sort of a progressive arrangement. Uh, it'll start really small. And then in the middle, it becomes the only two musician trio you'll ever hear. And that's followed by the big band section. So here we go. I tell you, we've, uh, we've had a couple of doozies these last couple of years. I'm afraid to even ask what else could go wrong. I mean, I'm afraid to turn on the news and I'm addicted. So I do. But after a few minutes, I turn it off to change the mood I'm in for a little while. We just see a grin. We just see a smile. It's time I left this hideaway. It's time I threw my pride away. No rights, no wrongs. Sing no sad songs for me. Cause life is just a bowl of cherries. Don't take it serious. Life's too mysterious. You work, you save, you worry so, but you can't take your dough when you go, go, go. So keep repeating, it's the berry. The strongest oak must fall. The sweet things in life to you are just long. So how can you lose what you've never owned? Life is just a bowl of cherries. So live and laugh at it all. That's why I only want to laugh. No time for crying. Yes, that's what we needed. A shot of my hands. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, next thing I would like to share with you. Uh, let's get back to act. Oh, wait, what are you doing, screen? That was weird. Um, eh, where did it go? There it is. All these tabs. This is uh, anyone can whistle, as you might have noticed. I just want to hear, I just want you to hear the beginning of this to know where it started and then where it goes. So that's what they say, easy. Anyone can whistle any old day, easy. It's all so simple, relax.
So, yes, that was Lee Remick, believe it or not. Um, so you hear what kind of a song it is. Now, one of the ways that I go about rearranging a song is I try to identify the most important individual parts of the accompaniment. And Aaron and I started working on this song for, for his Sondheim collection. And I started playing less and less. And then we wound up with this. Anyone can whistle, that's what they said, easy. Anyone can whistle, any old day, easy. It's all so simple, relax, let go, let fly. So someone tell me, why can't I? I can dance a tango, I can read Greek, easy. I can slay a dragon, any old week, easy. What's hard is simple What's natural comes hard Maybe you could show me How to let go Lower my guard Learn to be free Maybe if you'd whistle Whistle for me. So, music, music, music. Uh, I recommend that arrangement if anybody is learning to play the piano and they want to learn something that mostly only requires two fingers. <laughs> So, um, so I have more music I could play, but if anybody has any questions, this would be a good time. I have one question. Yes, ma'am. If you're going to sit and want to play on a piano, what would you play? Ah, uh, I generally play from the standards, the Gershwin and the Kern and the Porter. Uh, Cole Porter, by the way. Um, I, I do a, um, uh, I guess we call it music therapy. Uh, uh, Miriam, uh, the director, has a former student named Paulette. Paulette has Parkinson's. And Miriam and I twice a week go to Paulette's and play for her and sing. And Paulette is a singer. She was an operatically trained singer. And so she sings as much as she can along with us. Um, and we do tons of stuff, but it's mostly in the vicinity of Gershwin and Porter and, and Kern and those people. And it's funny, Miriam always had a little problem with Cole Porter. She never really liked him. And as we've gone over it and I pointed out to her what a brilliant melodist he was. Um, I, I won't go too deep in the weeds, but but if if you ever wanted to know anything about compositional theory, Study Cole Porter. He was brilliant. Anyway, but yeah, the standards, uh, Broadway shows and and uh, the, the greatest hits of the 30s and the 40s. Does anyone else have any questions they would like to ask or comments? So, John, I have a question for you. We've, we've all seen movies where the accompanist is sitting there and a singer comes in and and plops music on the piano and the accompanist says what what's your key or and the the singer is like oh you know anything that you like or whatever <laughs> um uh, could you tell the maybe not the most ridiculous but sort of a ridiculous story about when you first encountered someone singing an audition or something or other um and then what you did with that hey, you know um <laughs> In an early draft of this, <laughs> there was a story. 
Uh, this is a very long time ago. This was, uh, it's almost 40 years ago. I was playing auditions for one of the first times I was ever playing auditions for a Broadway show. And a person who I can't tell you the name of because you would know it and that would be mean, um, walked in and she reaches into her pocket and she pulls out this thing and she unfolds it and she hands me this music oh, and she says oh, she says we oh, hello to go. we have competition she hands me the music and she says i sing this a third down and then she walked away she didn't give me a tempo she didn't tell me anything else about the song she just says here and this wrinkly piece of, of paper and and so we did it but <laughs> Clearly, I've never forgotten it or gotten over it. <laughs> John, I'd like to say something. Okay. Well, now you you were in our companies for us for about 25 years altogether. It only uh, felt like that, Rod. It's a long time. <laughs> I, have to get, I have to say one thing. I'm sorry, I'm listening to something. For time is when I had to get somebody else because you were out and of the and you had to go on something else like that. And accompany this you know, piano for singers. Uh, we, we got talking here and talking around. Um, Steve, yes, thank you for muting yourself. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, as you know, most of the people that we got were fairly rookies like that. And you were very, well, you were very, very nice with them all. And you gave them a lot of, a, a lot of, uh, uh, good tips and good new things and new, a new way to do with things. And a lot of them that are still our still our long, our long friends with for all this long time that we've had, uh, they they still think of you and think of the uh, audition, how nice it was with you. So, well, long, that's very kind of you. Thank a long, you. A long term, a long. I, I have a little phasia now because I, I had a stroke two years ago, so I don't, I don't talk very well so any, anymore. But uh, I you know, just wanted to pass on to you really what what they all felt. And so do I, because that, that's that's lovely. Thank you, Rod. I I uh, don't know if one of the people who you're still in touch with was the young woman who walked up to me and handed me her music and looked me straight in the eye and said, I'm doing the boy next door. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Could be. Could be. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? <laughs> any answers? <laughs> yes, John. Hello. Uh, I think Steve is walking Walter's dog. Okay. <laughs> well, Steve, you froze. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, um, this is Mamie. I just want to say, you know, it's very difficult. We've gone through COVID, but this has been a great opportunity, you know, to um, share music, share John's talent. Um, if we had had this at the library, I'm sure most of you would not be able to attend. So I'm very pleased that we were able to do this. And um, so if anyone else would like to say anything before we getting ready to sign off, or John may want to share something else with us, Please feel free to speak up. Uh, many of us have known him for many years, and um, this is a different way of looking at him, of meeting him, seeing him. By the way, I just want to say thank, thank you for bringing, bringing this program together. It's very, very entertaining. It really is. Thank you. We've learned to improvise during these last couple of years. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, if we don't have any more questions. Oh, yes. I have a question. Oh. I see your crossword. I see your crossword behind you there. Um, do you, can you tell us about the connection between music and crosswords? Uh, there's none that I know of. The only connection it. between music and crosswords is that uh, some years at the crossword tournament, I have sung crossword puzzle songs. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's about the only connection I could, I could tell you. I just think about well, the math and the music and the cryptic connections. So. Just curious. 
present. John is very modest. He is a seven-time American CrossFit Puzzle Tournament winner. Oh, wow. That's where I know I'm from. Yes. So um, <laughs> he's very modest. He's not, he's not bragging about that. But I, when I, I'm, I'm one that has to erase constantly. I'm sure that's foreboding out there. <laughs> <laughs> and I almost never finish my puzzle. So, <laughs> okay, we have uh, Emily. You want to unmute? Hi, everybody. It's Emily Dowd. I'm here from the Huntington Arts Council, just auditing the program um, because we are part of the funders um, who helped this wonderful program get started. And I just wanted to say, John, thanks so much for. Um, this really great presentation. We're excited to see where everything goes from here. So just wanted to say thanks for doing everything you guys do. Oh, thank you, Emily. And, and Margaret wanted to speak. Oh, no, I can't get rid of that. <laughs> oh, okay. My <laughs> <laughs> <I> hand down. <laughs> Amy? Oh. I'll lower your hand. Okay. Catherine? Oh. Yeah. Hi, John. I'm a, I'm one of the Vassar classmates here. And John, Is that who you are? Remember? <laughs> John contributed enormously to our online class reunion uh, by, you know, playing and, and recordings and so on. So first, I just want to say thanks for that. A lot of us are deeply grateful that you did that for us. You're welcome. And the question I have um, might be completely irrelevant. I just am curious whether you could have had this career anywhere but New York. Well, that was part of why I thought about Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. uh, I was at the time a little bit stuck in New York. And I went out to the West Coast thinking that I should explore show business out there. What I discovered was that in Los Angeles, theater is the last thing on everybody's agenda. Mm -hmm. So... If they're not working on a movie or a TV show or getting a commercial or, or any of those things, then maybe they'll think about going to a theater audition. Mm. Wasn't It didn't seem like a good place. And then literally, I was, I was flying back to New York on a Thursday. I checked my answering machine on Wednesday, and there was a message from a guy who was uh, putting together a workshop of a new musical. And he wanted to know if I might be interested in being his second keyboard player. And I said, well, I'm in Los Angeles. I'm flying back tomorrow. He said, well, can you see me on Friday? Hmm. I said, okay. And then I met him on Friday and I had six weeks of work from stepping off the plane. And I yeah. thought, yeah, maybe New York is the better place. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay. I see a oh. hand. Oh, that's me. Um, I just wanted to mention that um, I... Unfortunately, or fortunately, I went to Catholic school and never had, um, you know, big music training and classes, but I've had some great private teachers and they had a very strong, solid classical um, background. And then when I was about 20, there was this man in my neighborhood, Adrian Tay, who was born in 1906. And he, um, he played flute, um, sax and clarinet with um, Artie Shaw and a lot of Broadway. He mm -hmm. smoked pot with Frank Sinatra. And um, and he took me, I was playing like Sonata Pathetique. And then he was, he said, I can't teach you any more classical, but um, I would, I'm going to teach you how to improvise, which I was never really good at. But I, the reason I'm speaking is because I am so lucky that before he died, he gave me a suitcase full of fake books. Wow. Like in the early 30s. So I can, you know, like go in and play all of those songs. And plus, I grew up with very elderly people. So I really have a good handle on the, you know, the first round of gay 90s, you know. Exactly. It's just, well, it's really wonderful to have all that. Yeah, it's 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 a good uh, mental library. And it's one of the things that uh, when I'm with Paulette and Miriam, um, we have some tunes that Paulette sings all the time, but, and we also just grab tunes out of thin air and, uh, it's like, well, pick a key, pick an arrangement, pick a style, you know, uh, what, what have we done? We did, uh, so in love from uh, kiss me, Kate, as if it had been uh, written for Fiddler on the Roof. Wow. It seemed like a good idea in the moment. <laughs> Of course, Cole Porter said the secret of success in theater music is to write Jewish music. That's Cole exactly. <laughs> um, 
Hi, John. I, I don't I don't I don't know how to do the hand thing, so here's my hand. Oh, that's an actual hand. That's just as good. <laughs> hand, really. Let's give him a hand. Um I know John from more the cabaret scene and classes, and I don't I know uh he would not want to be uh praised too highly. That would I could walk too- away for a minute. Oh, please. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> hold your ears. I, I do want to mention as a performer and a student that it's a great comfort and a great joy when uh, I get to work with that guy um, because he <laughs> honors the music so much, but, and, not but, and he honors the performer at whatever level or where he or she is and there's never judgment there's always encouragement and that's what we need in this world so i appreciate you john i'd like to work together again before too long okay uh, you know where to find me <laughs> i do <laughs> upper west upper east to upper west exactly but this was delightful thank you for sharing this oh, with thank us you. Thank you so much. John, do you want to play anything else as we close? Yeah, actually I would. Let's uh let's go out on a on a happier song. Let's go back to here. No, let's and go back. As he's getting I'm ready, on the wrong screen. Thank you for all coming. Um it was great opportunity. Okay, let's see. What's the easiest way to find this? Ah. I have no visual for this. I I apologize. You're going to get this out of iTunes. I had plenty of nothing, which was fine with me because I had rhythm, music, love, the sun, the stars, and the moon above, and the clear blue sky, and the deep blue sea, that was when the best things in life were free. Then time went by, and now I got plenty of plenty, which is fine with me because I still got love, still got rhythm, but look at what I got to go with them. Who could ask for anything more? I hear you query. Who could ask for anything more? Well, let me tell you, dearie. Got my diamonds. Got my yacht. Got a gal I adore. I'm so happy with what I got. I want I find counting a bore Keep the numbers mounting, your accountant does the counting I got rhythm, music too Just as much as before Got my gal and my sky of blue Now, however, I own better than more. One is fun, why not two? And if you like two, might as well have four. And if you like four, why not a few? Why not a slew more? Never say when, never stop at plenty. If it's gonna rain, let it pour. Happy with ten, happier with twenty. If you like a penny, wouldn't you like many much more? No, indeed. That's just stocking the store. Gotta feel your cupboard. Remember, Mother Hubbard. Each possession you possess helps your spirits to soar. That's what's soothing about excess. Never settle for something less. Something's better than nothing, yes, and nothing's better than more, more, more. Except more, more, more. Hmm. 
Once you have it all, you may find all else above. That though things are bliss, there's one thing you miss, and that's more. Thank you very much and i'm going to stop the recording so um we will be glad to have you come we have another concert coming up in june so uh that'll be a classical concert um with a, another musician from valley stream leonard lehrman uh we have an art lecture that's coming up at the end of the month and um you know it's been great to have these people you come from all over the united states and um Join us. So if you're interested in any of these other activities, you have my email and I can send you information. But thank you, John, so much for coming and entertaining us this evening. Thank you, Mamie. Thank you, John. Bye. Bye, Mamie. Bye. Bye, John. Bye. 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 Watching the video. Bye, Bye John. Mamie. Take it easy. Bye, Bye Rod. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs>